We've all been there. You know there's a task that you need to get done. You know you could have woken up early and gone to the gym or read a book or meditated. And you consistently, you keep procrastinating. Why? In this video, I'm gonna cover the nine reasons that people procrastinate and the nine solutions that are proven to work to help you overcome them. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe and you click on the bell icon so that you're notified when new videos come out. I drop weekly videos on self-improvement on my channel, but without further ado, let's get into it. The first one is you set yourself up to fail by not having a plan. Before you go to bed at night, the most important thing you can do is to have a plan. What are you doing tomorrow when you wake up? By not having a plan, what happens? You walk haphazardly, unconsciously, into autopilot, into the day, and immediately you're distracted. You become an effect of the world rather than the cause of your world. And there's all kinds of random factors that will affect you. Your mom says, can you go pick up some milk? Somebody asks you for a favor, your friend calls, there are distractions everywhere and you need to navigate them. And the first and best way that you can avoid procrastination is having a very clear plan. The number one goal for me tomorrow is to get that business plan done, is to get my revision done, is to get that task I've been putting off for too many weeks done. Have a clear plan and write down every single day, just on a post-it note or on your phone or text it to someone. I don't care how you do it, but have a clear plan. The second reason, and it links to the first, is you have a plan, but you don't schedule it. You're satisfied by it. You write your plan down and you're satisfied. You feel like you've already won, but you haven't decided where in your day, where in the white space of your calendar, you're going to get that done. You don't think through, how long is this gonna take? And not only do you underestimate how long it's going to take, you don't commit. You don't decide, okay, at two o'clock on Wednesday, I'm going to record YouTube videos and these are the exact videos I'm going to record. I'm going to do it here. Do you see the difference when you have the clarity of when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen and why it's important to you? It's gonna get done. But by leaving something to chance, by having some wriggle room, you're making it more likely that you're going to procrastinate. Leave no stone unturned, make it very clear. So all you have to do is step into your running shoes, open the door and go for the two mile run that you know you want to do. The third reason is you don't put yourself in productive environments. Be real. Are you going to get your book written? Are you going to get the assignment done by sitting in your pajamas again and working from home? or working from somewhere where it's comfortable? Or are you going to be more productive if you go to the writer's group, you sit with other people to write the next chapter of your blog or your book? What is the most productive environment around you? Who are the productive people that you know that you can expose yourself to so that you get what you need to done? The fourth one links to this is you hang around distracting technology, distracting people and places. What I mean by this is, there have been so many times where I love my family, but they are the biggest distractions sometimes. I'm sitting on my laptop, I have my headphones on, I'm focusing on something, but there's a funny video they want me to watch. There's a random question that really, I don't need to answer right now. And so what happens? My attention is drawn here. And it takes another 20 minutes sometimes for me to get back into my flow. And that, the fault really, it wasn't my family, it was me. I know what I could do. I know I could go to the coffee shop down the road. I know that I could go to the YouTube space or to Boulderton or to my office space or just to the bus stop or sitting in the car or the cafe in my local gym. By allowing that chance interaction to happen, that chance distraction to happen, again, I increase the likelihood that I'll do the big P. I'll engage with the procrastination there. 
and I'll be honest, I'm tired of fighting with it when I could just remove it from the room entirely or remove myself from that space entirely. Number five, every year in my business, there is a fun activity that we all have to do as business owners called self-assessment, company returns, tax. And what I mean here, the points that I'm making is you have an avoidance for a particular type of task. What I noticed was when I was talking to my friends about this task, oh, you know, it's time to do that long company return. What am I doing? I'm creating this narrative that there are some tasks that I like doing and some tasks that are long. But when I dissect that, what does it really mean? What if I just made it a really simple thing? What if I understood that really I'm doing a two hour task that requires a couple of hours, a bit of focus and it's done. It's not the task that is the problem. It's the way that I mentally set myself up to avoid it and thereby creating more inertia, more challenges to getting things done. Whereas if I reduce the obstacles, things become much easier and I'm less likely to procrastinate. Now look at your own task list. Look at the things that you want to get done to be more productive, to be more disciplined, to build better habits and ultimately improve yourself. What are some things that are kind of boring, but need to get done that you just put off with this excuse, this excuse that it's long, I can't be bothered. And instead, what if you just focused on the solution? Well, what would make it easier? How long does it really take? And is it really as bad as you're making out? Number six, you start your day by setting yourself up for failure and not success. And what I mean by this is linked to some of the earlier points. You idle and amble your way out of bed. You're not really sure what you're doing. You're watching YouTube videos, you're on your feeds, you're watching people's stories. Is that the most intentional way to get the most out of today, out of this moment? Or is it to stop and to pause and just close your eyes and to take a couple of deep breaths, to think through what the most productive day would be, what the best use of your energy would be, what the number one priority that you wrote down was be intentional, know what it is you're setting out to achieve and then go do that. Find the best way to start your day. For me, the first thing I do is fold my bed, meditate and press play on my audiobook. So while I'm brushing my teeth and I'm looking in the mirror, I've created at least two minutes in my day as soon as I've got started to start how I mean to go on. So I'm not waiting till two, three, four, five, six, seven o'clock to salvage my day. Start how you mean to go on. Number seven is the demon of perfectionism. When it comes to making videos, when it comes to writing a funding application, when it comes to sending a message to the people I care about or taking a goddamn selfie. There's so many times where perfectionism has got in the way. And I constantly remind myself, done is better than none. Complete is better than perfect. So take a look at the things you wanna achieve from the big goals right down to the tiny tasks. Where does perfectionism get in your way? And what if you stopped trying to be perfect and you started being consistent? You started focusing on ticking the checkbox, completing tasks rather than trying to make them too perfect. Because at the end of the day, doing things to 70% but consistently and completely is better than 100% some of the time. Stop aiming for perfectionism and start aiming for completion. Number eight, you don't see the point. You don't see the point in that task because somebody else has set it for you. Or it's just 
what you've always done. Take a look at the task. Take a look at that item, the thing you want to get done and ask yourself, why are you doing that? What's in it for you? And if it's something that isn't appealing straight away, the reason that you come up with, look deeper. Well, I'm doing my company accounts because HMRC and the tax man needs it. Well, why is that beneficial? Because I don't want a black mark on my business. I don't want to pay a fine. Why is that important? Because I want to keep the money that I work hard for. It could be as mundane as that, or it could be something like, why am I avoiding this task that my colleague has set for me? Because I'm kind of annoyed that he didn't ask if I want to do this. And why am I annoyed about that? Because I didn't stand up for myself. I didn't communicate effectively that, bro, I would love to help you out, but I have enough on my plate. So think through, why is it that you're engaging in this task? And what benefit, if not immediately clear, does it have for you? And the final one, you haven't prioritized things properly. I like to think of all the tasks that people set for me and I set for myself as belonging in four categories. Urgent, very important, kind of important, and it can wait. The things that can wait, normally set by other people. Can you drop off this thing to my school? The assignment I didn't complete. Can you pick up some milk for me? Yeah, I can, but once I've completed the things that are important to me. The urgent things. I need to send an invoice to get paid. I need to pay someone in my company. That's urgent. Very important. Somebody has set a task for me, but it's not something I need to get to immediately, but it is something I need to get done at some point today or tomorrow. By prioritizing and knowing where does this task sit for me? Is it something that I need to just delete? Is it something that I need to delegate? Or is it something that I need to do? And if so, when? By setting time aside and knowing which category, which priority bracket it falls in for you, the judge of your to-do list, you create more space, more mental freedom to get things done. So you're less likely to hit that grizzly bear of procrastination and be taken over and off course from where you want to go in life. And the final thing, there is a personality test that you can do that will help you to understand, are you shipwrecked? Are you the master or are you the dabbler? And how these personality types affect your procrastination. I actually have a course called Inner Compass, which goes through some of these things. So check out the test, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon, and as always, Accept the best and nothing less. Absorb what's useful and discard what isn't. Add what's uniquely your own and change the life that you want to create to something more meaningful. I'll see you in the next video. Comment down below. Peace.